You, you there, are you looking for horror news? Then you're in the right place. I'm Lady Mariam, and welcome to Grim X News. We're about to dive into some horror headlines and uh, my unpopular opinion. But first, if you want to support indie horror content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. In addition to this format, which will hopefully come out weekly, we also upload a bunch of other content, including our monthly book club and short films, teasers, etc. Now let's get started. It's time to whip out the brew and see what's new. The film Goodnight Mommy is getting a remake. The original film came out in 2014 and is an Austrian psychological horror directed by Ulrich Seidel. The English title is Goodnight Mommy, the German one, Ich Sie, Ich Sie. The movie is about twin brothers who move to a new house with their mother after she has had facial reconstructive surgery. They quickly realize that something is off about their mother, and they start becoming suspicious of the woman living with them in this isolated country villa. No spoilers, I promise, but the movie is absolutely fantastic. I mean, the idea that your own guardian, the person who's supposed to be taking care of you, looking after you, may be your biggest threat is absolutely terrifying, and the film is suspenseful as heck. So why would you even make a nearly identical remake? Because of the language. They want it to be in English. Now, I've got a problem with that for numerous reasons. For starters, the original was so good that the remake can, at its best, be equally good. But statistically speaking, it's more likely to be less than good. At the moment, the odds are even worse because half of the tension in the original is the fact that we don't know what the mother looks like. But in the remake, we do. She looks like Naomi Watts. This is is exactly what she looks like under the fancy compression mask. And I'm glazing over the fact that Watts has already played in an English language remake of a foreign film with a creepy child. Plus, I always find that watching a foreign film kind of adds an additional layer of unease because the culture itself is so foreign to us that we don't quite understand a lot of the rituals or the history or the symbolism in the film, which means that after watching a film like that, you really need to dive into their local cinema or maybe their lore and their history, and that adds an additional layer to the experience. I'm thinking of films like Audition and Baskin that left me confused and overwhelmed in the best of ways until I read up on the symbolism afterwards. That said, there are pros. It puts the original title back into the media, giving these indie films a second wave of attention. It's also important to mention that the film's original writers and directors, Severin Fiala and Veronika Franz, are going to be executive producers alongside executive producer Naomi Watts. You know what? I take it back. Naomi Watts is single-handedly trying to bring a new audience to foreign horror indie films. Just stop casting yourself and I might applaud you a little more. I don't know. What do you guys think? Comments down below. Next on the agenda, Saw the Experience is a thing. It's a fully immersive, narrative-driven theatrical experience. There's one in Vegas and another opening in London in October this year. Now, this sent me down a little bit of a rabbit hole, so join me on this stream of consciousness. I started wondering if the film Saw and that franchise actually contributed to the success of Escape Rooms. You know, as opposed to people historically locking up other people and then wondering, hey, can we brand this differently and just charge people for trying to escape? Turns out the first official escape room was invented quite late, namely 2004, and was a video game by Toshimitsu Takagi called Crimson Room. I actually remember playing this game. It's a point-and-click puzzle adventure sort of thing, and it did become oddly popular, basically birthing the concept of escaping a room for fun. Saw didn't come out until 2005. Maybe there was an influence anyway. Funnily enough, I did stumble across an article called Why Escape Rooms Are Commonly Misconstrued as the Horror Franchise Saw, written by someone who has been working in the escape room industry for years. They argue that the Saw films have actually hurt the industry, saying people regard the experience as scary rather than fun before even trying it. Now, the article is super literal, but then again, a lot of people do think literally. So there's not a doubt in my mind that at least for a portion of potential escape room, what do you call them, attendees? 
es escapees, <laughs> clients, <laughs> this might actually be a legitimate reason to not try an escape room. Then I got lost on Reddit which, by the way, is never a good idea, and found that some people argue that the Canadian 1997 film Cube started the craze for escape rooms long before Saw did. In conclusion, there is no answer to my question, just lots of information and opinions, but if you are interested in the Saw experience, like I said, Vegas and London, I guess, are your places to go. And finally, let's talk about the new Hellraiser movie, which is coming out as a Hulu original directed by David Bruckner. And there are already a few interesting conversations happening around this film. For starters, this Hellraiser's pinhead is going to be played by Jamie Clayton. You might remember the iconic role played by Doug Bradley in the original Clive Barker film, but that was a creative choice by Barker. In The Hellbound Heart, a horror novella by Barker himself, Pinhead, or then a nameless priest, was described as an androgynous being with a feminine voice. The bigger question was why Bradley was cast in the first place. And then I went down another rabbit hole. Long story short, the budget was tight and Bradley was Barker's friend, allegedly. In any case, with that in mind, the new interpretation of Pinhead is actually closer to the original source material. Then let's take a look at the director himself, David Bruckner. I mean, he has the weight of an entire franchise on his shoulders, but so far he's been saying all the right things. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, he said, this is not a remake. I just didn't think you could ever remake the original Hellraiser. It's too much its own thing, and it would be, I think, perilous territory for filmmakers, because how do you top that? This is a new story in the Hellraiser universe, end quote. And that's the right attitude. You can't constantly take stories and put them on steroids with the justification of making them modern. It works sometimes, but fails more often than not. It pisses off the existing fan base and doesn't attract new fans because it doesn't feel genuine. I'm also generally intrigued to see what Bruckner does with the film, because historically speaking, he gives his projects 100%. I got to interview him for his film The Night House when it came out, and for that he actually integrated optical illusions and negative space in the house where they were filming. This guy knows how to make a scene feel weird. He understands the balance between practical and special effects, and he is passionate about storytelling. But then again, who knows how many people actually get involved in practice when a franchise film is made. I'm crossing my fingers for you, David. Can you guys think of remake fails? Or perhaps success stories where a film was reinterpreted within the universe of the original? Feel free to share as well in the comments down below. <laughs> And there you have it, my thoughts on a few horror headlines currently making the rounds. What do you think? Let me know. Is there another horror headline that perhaps has been on your mind? Maybe something else you'd like my useless views on? Do share in the comments down below. I'm Lady Mariam, and this has been this week's episode of Grim X News. Remember to come back to me when you want your next dose of horror tea. It's okay.